that I know about events like this is that the right people show up at just the right time. So I'm looking out at all of you and I'm just thinking to myself, these are the exact mindful mavens who are meant to be in this room at this exact moment. I was just curious, does anyone want to say, share a few words about maybe your favorite theme of this book? For example, synchronicities. All through this book, all 369 pages, I feel like every page was some kind of synchronistic event from his life that he would then recap. And like Marisa and I were talking about earlier, you can tell he's a teacher because at the end of every chapter, he's recapping and drilling points home, and I got so much out of that. So some of the themes were like synchronicities and manifestation were my favorite topics. Um, anyone care to share what your favorite theme was or maybe the favorite thing you got out of this book? Hi, everyone, I'm Jen. Um, Jennifer Jorak, thank you so much. Do you want to share first? to the way his brain worked really uh, when he was younger and thought um, uh, in, in the high school ages and the, the, the book starts like when he's young and goes through his life so at the very beginning of the book I really related when he was in high school and um, realized like he's a little bit different than everybody else he thinks about the world a little bit differently and maybe has more awareness than a normal 17 year old would have so that's how many people have ever felt like you're a little different than everybody else, or at least those around you, or, yeah, right? It was just a really beautiful theme, and, yeah, go ahead. That, that was kind of the biggest thing that I got out so far. I loved getting your message. So Jen messaged me on Facebook, and she's like, oh my god, Carla, this book! Like, it just was really, really resonating, and I was like, I know. <laughs> Yeah, two percent, baby. That's it. When I got Jen's message, so it was shortly after uh, we had announced the book, and messages were coming in from the Facebook group, and um, everybody was just like, "Oh my gosh, this book! It's it's amazing. I don't, I'm resonating with him so much." And obviously, I mean, Dr. Dyer has touched so many lives. He was—I didn't know this, but he was on PBS. Uh, publicizing all of these books that he's written. So basically, in my view, the book takes us on this journey of every book he's ever written. So it was really hard for me not to stop reading this book and be like, oh, I want to read that book now, I want to read that book now, because it just went through, and he's written like 40, some 41 books, I believe. So he, because this is his memoir, it takes him takes us through that journey of every book he's ever written, from erroneous zones to wishes fulfilled, which I'll talk a little bit about tonight, um, the power of intention, which I haven't read yet. And I thought it was really interesting how in the beginning of his career, he started with books on a really psychological basis, because that's what he was so interested in. And then you see him through the course of this book as he's telling his story gravitate toward the more spiritual realm, and when I say spiritual, I mean, there's nothing that Dr. Dyer didn't believe, because one of his favorite quotes was, with God, all things are possible. So, I mean, really, there's nothing he didn't believe was possible, you know? So, in terms of the spiritual realm, that made things really interesting, and as you get through, if you're not quite through the whole book yet, as you get toward the end, you're just mind blown. You're like, wow, I never thought of this. I never thought of that. And um, for me, spiritually, I'm okay with that really broad perspective. And of course, anything we discuss tonight is not in any way meant to change anyone's spiritual or religious beliefs or anything. You know, we, we respect everyone for their beliefs. And 
I just think uh, the way his mind worked throughout this book, my mind was really just cracked wide open. And I read a lot of this stuff, so, so that was really cool for me. So Jen, you said, OMG, capital letters, exclamation point, exclamation point, blah, blah. Uh, she was like, this book, I relate to this man so much. This is how I feel and always have, like I sometimes see the world differently than everyone else. And I think that's really cool coming from you, especially as a photographer, because when I see you with your subjects, I see the way you elicit something from your people that just, bam, it just hits you. Like it's just something in their eyes and everything. So I know you're always seeing things that maybe we don't see. Um, and you talked about the choices in your life having been, you can kind of see how they were guided. Now, I thought that was really cool. And um, I promise I have Jen's permission to read this because we read each other's minds and we're besties. So, no, we talked about it earlier. And um, she said, thank you for pushing me toward these things. You're so welcome, of course. And the nicest part, you are truly my guiding light, a true friend, and I love you so. Oh, thank you. And then I said, oh my God, you're making me cry. I love you so much, my bestie, and heart of con, heart of con, heart of con, and et cetera. <laughs> so that was a little conversation, but I feel I wanted to share, you know, one of those messages with you just to say, like, this is how books make us feel. Like, I have goosebumps all of 